Well, good morning, Mosaic, and welcome back. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to Online Worship with Mosaic Church. I'm your host, DJ, and I'm the Online Worship Director. We are in our second week of our Undivided series, and today, Pastor Wayne is joined by his friend, Palmer Jason. And you get to join in on their conversation about Kingdom Voices and how your words have power and can change the people around you. You know, it kind of reminds me of the butterfly effect. Have you guys ever heard of this? It's a chaos theory that basically says that the very smallest change or happening can result in large differences somewhere else. A butterfly flaps its wings in Kansas and causes a tsunami in Japan. You yell at your spouse before leaving work and it affects their entire day. You speak positively and encouragement into a friend and it changes their course of their entire life. Your tongue holds more responsibility than you think. We're going to jump into James and learn more of that in a second. But first, let's pray and worship together. Hello, church. We had the honor to pray in this moment. And let's go to pray. Across the barriers that divide race from race, reconcile us, O Christ, by your cross. Across the barriers that divide rich from poor, reconcile us, O Christ, by your cross. Across the barriers that divide people from different cultures, reconcile us, O Christ, by your cross. Across the barriers that divide Christians, reconcile us, O cross, Christ, by your cross. Across the barriers that divide men and women, young and old, reconcile us, O Christ, by your cross. Confront us, O Christ, with the hidden prejudices and fears that deny and betray our prayers. Enable us to see the causes of strife. Remove from us all sense of superiority. Teach us to grow in unity with all God's children. Amen. Amen. Hey, family. Um, Tiffany here. I would like to share with you a little bit of what's on my heart. During this 40-something day of shelter-in-place, my family and I have been here and God has been bringing over and over and over again to my mind and to my heart um, a particular song of worship. And that song is God is Good by Jonathan Reynolds. Um, I had thought maybe I would sing that for you, but God had other plans. And God brought to mind um, a friend of mine who has a son who is deaf and his first language is ASL. And I just thought, how awesome is that, that he worships in his native language, which is ASL, and that we too could worship with him in that way. Um, because that's what Mosaic is all about. We're people from different backgrounds, different languages, different cultures, and we all come together to bring the kingdom of God here on earth as we are united through our love and not separated because of our differences, that we can see our differences as our strengths instead of our differences as our weaknesses. And so I asked this friend of mine if she would be willing to teach me the ASL for this song, and um, I'm going to attempt to do it for you um, in this time of worship. And I asked that you um, join me because I wanted to teach you just a little bit of it, just a little part of this song. It's a really short song, um, but it says, God is good. And please, I'm apologizing for my ASL because I really don't know ASL, but she did graciously um, give me a video of her signing this. And so if I botch it, I'm sorry. Um, but that's part of, you know, growing in love for one another that we're going to um, learn from each other. And sometimes, you know, we're going to stumble as we're learning new things, but it makes us stronger because we're willing to reach out or willing to reach through that gap and say, hey, I don't understand this or I don't know this. Can you teach me um, and grow closer to God in communion and fellowship through this way? So the song says, God is good. And so from what I understand, we're going to take our right hand and we're going to go kind of like midway through our face here as you look up and we say, God and then for is good, we're going to take our hand here to our chin, touch it, and then we're going to bring it down onto our palm and smack it. So is good. I mean, like this is a proclamation, people. Is good. This is not a quiet smack. At least that's not what it was when she recorded it for me. So God is good. 
So let's take this time and let's worship together. Um, if you just want to sing, that's fine. If you want to join me in the signing, that's awesome. At least for that part, God is good. Um, and now we've known something that we can grow closer to a sister or a brother who may not be um, speak the same language as us. So how awesome is that? May your struggles keep you near the cross and may your troubles show that you need God and may your battles in the way they should and may your bad days prove God is good, and may your whole life prove that God is good. May your struggles keep you near the cross, and may your troubles show that you need God, and may your battles in the way they should and may your bad days prove that God is good and may your whole life prove that God is good and may your struggles keep you Near the cross, and may your trouble so that you you need God, and may your battles in the way they should, and may your bad days prove that God you're good, and may your whole life. God, you're good, and may your bad days prove that God is good, and may your whole life prove that God is good. I'm so excited, Mosaic, to introduce to you my good friend and colleague, Pastor Palmer Jason. We have been meeting together for about 10 years, yeah. I believe. And what I know about my friend is that he's a clear thinker with the mind of Christ. And it is a delight for me to be here with you, Palmer. Same We're here. usually in the, co in the coffee shop. Right. Uh, usually at Bill's Donuts. Um, we start off at Boston Stoker all those years, years ago. ago. Yep. Um, but what I love about Palmer as well is he has a passion to see kids and families and individuals grow in their relationship with Christ and what impact a relationship with Jesus makes in a person's life to give them victory and, and to walk it out. And so uh, Palmer worked in finance with, for Procter & Gamble yep, for, for a few for, years in another life. <laughs> several years uh, before you started up the uh, church, the uh, Jubilee Community Church. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then quite a story because it was a story of faith. Meeting in a church basement, meeting in a school, set up and tear down for 10 years, Mosaic. And then now uh, they live in a building. They're into a building that sits right across the street from Wright Brothers Airport in Springboro. Yep. Debt free. Operating yes. debt free. Yes. Uh, and and so, so that cool. is incredible. Um, you operate a preschool called Good Shepherd Academy. Yep. And you've continued to operate during COVID. We were shut down briefly, just for about maybe about six weeks. 
So we're back open with uh, lower ratios, but still open. Yeah. Six weeks only yeah. shut down and then just went yep. uh, on from there. Yep. And even though you're you know, down in capacity, you're able to still affect lives. Absolutely. Which is, which is awesome. Uh, well, tell us about your family. Well, I have two kids, um, a daughter who's in a junior in college at uh, Kent State, stud ah, oops, senior in college. Ezzy. <laughs> right. Yes. Studying uh, ECE, early childhood education. My son Preston is a junior in high school. And then uh, my wife Lisa and I have been married for over 34 years. 34 years. Yep. Beautiful. And uh, tell us also what Lisa does. Lisa is a uh, anesthesiologist. Well, um, like I said, you and I have been meeting for about 10 years every Thursday. And we've experienced some ministry together as well. Some worship times, our congregations together at a local high school, um, summer kids camp, a trip to uh, jungle gyms, yep. <laughs> international marketplace and the parks, etc. Um, one of the things that I've always looked forward to about our Thursday meetings uh, is that we get to debrief either the previous week's message or we get to really plan and talk through what the message is coming up. But one of the things that I really appreciate about Palmer is how you get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've always enjoyed our times of, uh, of preaching to each other too because every pastor needs a pastor. Well, tell us um, in this season, what are you most excited about and what are you most challenged by? So, what I'm most excited about is that God is up to something in his church. Amen. So, this is his church. He knows what he's doing and he's stirring some things up. What um, troubles me now or what is heavy on my heart is what I call the deafening silence of the church, of the evangelical church. Um, now, when I say silence i don't mean that there's a lack of noise but rather that much of it is just white noise you know all of that um you hear all this frequency all this noise at the same frequency but nothing really standing out background noise. <clears throat> background noise right just enough to um it, almost to soothe you as opposed to to wake you up to what's going on so I, my question is where is the prophetic voice of the church right the church has to be intentional and speak to current um, and national events. So when I say white noise, I'm intentional about that because as a black pastor, as a as a person of color, I keep waiting to hear um, table issues discussed from the pulpit. You know the what the, we talk about. What we talk about every day in the race, coffee shop. The racial unrest. The political tension that's going on, the disproportionate effects of COVID on communities of color mm. and the economically disadvantaged. I just keep waiting to hear it addressed. And it's like, um, when we don't speak about it, when we don't, as a church, speak prophetically, then I just think we're missing a chance. So I think it's commendable that, um, that Mosaic has embarked on this series called Undivided, because based on what I'm seeing um, in our current outlook, the title is either merely aspirational or it's prophetic and um, because we are divided yes we are and depending on what the church does uh, in this moment will make a difference but I can see why not a lot of people are doing it because it's uh, it's risky because being out of your comfort zone because not being able um, you could to have members. control exactly so people not many people are doing it so kudos um, so I guess that's what I mean about getting straight to the point. <laughs> but you know, James, uh, this this text in James chapter three, he doesn't pull any punches either. You know, he speaks straight uh, to the church. So let's let's read some scripture. He says, "Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect." able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. And likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great force is set on fire, but a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, 
a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praising and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be so. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can fig trees bear olives and grapevines bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So what are some things um, if you were gonna preach this, you would wanna bring out? Well, first of all, that our words have power. Yep. If we claim to follow Jesus Christ, then we form our words with wisdom and care. Mm -hmm. Understanding that our words we use absolutely have power. Um, a couple questions for us to consider this morning as we think about the impact of our tongue is how do we effectively use our words? Can we really speak the truth but in love? What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, what does it mean um, to to choose our words or what is it? Uh, why is it that choosing our words can be so difficult for us? Let's name the tension here. The church must be prophetic, as you had mentioned, and yet be relationally unified. Mm -hmm. We're called up, mm -hmm. but we're called out yes. to call people to God's standard and away from the world's what the world says is the standard. We are called to be unified within. But for many of us in the church, it is tough to call people out on truth. Mm -hmm. And I smile because I've heard you do it many times. You <laughs> call people out on with the truth of God, which is awesome. Got to do it. But while remaining unified in Christ, we acknowledge that there must be both. We're called to both. Yeah. So James tells us that we as teachers are held to a higher standard, and we must find our words and do so with wisdom. We need to recognize the power of the tongue, that speech matters, that words matter. And not just for us teachers. James is talking to all of us who claim to be a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And there are three reasons we have to guard our mouth. You know, the first one is, is that my tongue directs where I go. That's what James said. Yes. It determines my direction. When we put bits in the mouths of horses, we can turn the whole animal, just a little bit. Yep. Or take a ship, for example, you've been on a cruise ship. Uh, you know, just this little rudder in the back compared to the big ship mm -hmm. steers it where to go. Uh, it tells the pilot, where, the pilot tells it where it wants to go by this little rudder. Words Absolutely. are powerful. Yeah. And, and you say, my tongue directs where I go, but not only does it direct where you go, but it also directs where people go who listen to you. And that's why it's so important um, for the, the church to speak up on issues. Words matter. I'm not just talking about uh, people taking you to negative destinations. You know, sometimes somebody say, oh, no, you didn't go there. Oftentimes we have to talk about things that, that people don't want to talk about. Um, but we can help people to go to places that they would never go on their own. If we first build relationship like we've been doing over the years, and if we're willing to share our stories, then we can help someone else to go somewhere that they wouldn't be willing to go on their own. So while we read James and it, it seems to be talking about, hey, watch your mouth, mm -hmm. don't, you know, and from out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, but you're saying too, the, the words we use can help us go to a place we need to go. We need to go. Yeah. If we're going to grow. I yep. like it. Yeah. So second thing, um, so uh, my tongue directs where I go, but secondly, uh, my tongue can destroy what I have. And I guess that's what James is really trying to put out. Yeah. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also can be a fire. Well, you know, out in California, one of the forest fires that was set, we find out, was from a gender reveal party. Right. There in the backyard. Yeah. This was a, to be a positive thing. But it went astray and it sparked a fire. Sometimes our words, when we're careless, can spark a great fire and we've seen evidence of that yes. all over the place yes so words have the power to bless people and to curse people uh it can set a whole life on fire and we 
we often um, have words that were so powerfully used as us as young people. Phrases that were used when we were young can still have an impact on us today, either positively or negatively. Absolutely. So we have to be careful, as Proverbs 21 sa says, uh, if you want to stay out of trouble, be careful what you say. Uh, and then in James, it says in verse 6 there, our power, uh, our words can set our whole course of life on fire. Mm. And, and it itself set on fire by hell. So we have to be careful with our words. So I suppose that we actually can hurt our prophetic witness and destroy relationships if we're not pro if we're not stopping, praying, and thinking, and then speaking. But there are definite times when God wants us to speak out. Absolutely. And I would also add the caveat that, or just some food for thought, holding your tongue is not the equivalent of taming your tongue. Because just because you don't say it doesn't mean that you don't harbor that thought uh, in your heart, right? It doesn't mean that you don't believe it. It doesn't mean that, that you don't have uh, some negative thing that you want to push out. One of the byproducts of our current divided environment is that people now have no filter, right? And as, so now as a result, they're saying out loud what they have been harboring in their heart, which I think is a good thing because we can't deal with what we don't face. And I think it's important for us to, as a church, to face things that have been put out in society. That's the only way we can get a divided people to be undivided. So it's like a sweeping under the rug, sweeping under the rug, sweeping under the rug. I'm just going to hold my tongue where, wait a minute, we got to bring this out so that we can deal with it. Yes. It's like, let's put it on the table so that we can work it through. Yes. But if I don't know that it's there. Yes. But we got to speak the truth in love. But we still got to speak it. Amen. And that's what the, James seems to be getting at. Um, and, and let's. Let's go to point number three here. My tongue displays who I am, because this is getting to it. Um, your tongue reveals who you are or maybe what you've been holding in. Yeah, absolutely. And and um, so out of the same mouth can come praising and cursing, my brothers, this should not be. In that, look, if you've got ill feelings, it shouldn't stay there. Mm. You have to get it out and then be able to deal with it. Yes. So that there can be fresh water. In other words, my uh, now my the words reveal where my heart is. Uh, Jesus is speaking this truth to the religious leaders. Look at Matthew 12. How can you who are evil say anything good for them? Now he's speaking to power. Yes. He's speaking to the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. For the mouth speaks what is the heart it's is full, full of. of. Yes. A good person brings good things out of the good stored up in them. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in the heart. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. I think in this, this is where it becomes even more important not to stuff it, but to share it. Yes. Yes. Because out, that's why God says guard your heart. Because out of it flow the very issues of life. That's good. So how can we live as a united people? How can we get to the heart of the matter? And this is the deal. We've got to get a new heart. Yes. In Ezekiel, rid yourself of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Yes. God says in scripture, I will replace their hearts of stone with a heart of flesh. flesh. Yes. And 2 Corinthians 15 says, uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. That gives me hope. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, but we got to ask God for help. Jesus shows us what to say and the way it needs to be said. And here's two great prayers, Mosaic, uh, as you had mentioned. Uh, Palmer, set a guard over my mouth, O Lord, and keep watch over the door of my lips. That's from Psalm 141, verse three. And one prayer that we always pray before we preach, Palmer, yeah. may the words, words of, of my, my mouth and, and this meditation, meditation of, of our hearts be it, pleasing yeah. in your sight, Lord, my rock and my Lord redeemer. Jesus. We got to ask Jesus for help in our heart. And then the third thing is to think before we speak. James 119, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. 
Yes, we must speak. And yes, we must act. As we were told last week, Mosaic, in James chapter 2, you know, action, uh, faith, it, a Christian is faith plus action. Yes. That's what a kingdom people is. Faith plus action. But in order to act, we have to stop, pray, and think. Yeah. Then speak. Um, but I, I, I guess this is what, where we land today, Palmer, is that our words are powerful. And James is saying that our actions will follow our words. Absolutely. Yep. And where do we land in James 3 there in verses 13? Well, the scripture at the end, he says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by the deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and uns unspiritual and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, and then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. That is a good way to, uh, to end this chapter. It's a good word to hear. Because it's not just saying, watch your mouth. And, you know, watch what comes out or just hold it and stuff it down. Yeah. It's saying, no, uh, your actions, which are peace loving and so forth, will flow from that. But we got to make sure that when we're speaking, that that wisdom, that we're speaking with a wisdom that comes down from God. So I just um, I think it's important for us to know as a church that we're the peacemakers. We're the ones that even though we have to speak to current issues that are in life, we have to speak up when things are wrong, okay? One, one thing that we need to do, when I hear, like we don't want to use phrases that we hear um, out all the time. When someone hears no justice, no peace, that can raise up something in them that instead of hearing at a deeper level, they can put up a guard right away. When I hear that, I hear the cry of someone's heart saying, who's going to hear, who's going to speak for me, who's going to address what is wrong in life? And we as the church, when we speak prophetically and when we come as peacemakers, we have the answer to what brings peace. So instead of just no justice, I say when people K-N-O-W, when you finally know justice, you will finally K-N-O-W, you will know peace. And you will only know that when you know the Prince of Peace. So I heard and was reminded of this exact thought this last week, I went to a Christian conference. It was a conference for Christian leaders from all over the United States. Okay. They're powerful, powerful. But one of the speakers used a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King when he was talking about reconciliation. What does it really take for there to be reconciliation? And Dr. King said it this way, one of the greatest problems of history is that the concepts of love and power are usually contrasted as polar opposites. Mm -hmm. Love is identified with a resignation of power and power with a denial of love. What is needed, Dr. King says, is a realization that power without love is reckless. We know that. Mm -hmm. And abusive, we've seen that. But love without power is just sentimental and anemic. Mm -hmm. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice. Justice, is, uh, justice at its best is love correcting everything that stands against love okay and that can be uncomfortable absolutely and should be because if it's not uncomfortable then it's probably not really getting at the real what, the real issue, issue which then it causes the silence that we have had so speaking powerful truth with love is what james is calling us to church finding a way to speak wisdom which is action into a divided world that will not only, it's gonna take godly conviction, but also words motivated from by love on high. Amen. Amen. Mosaic, let's close with a word of prayer. Palmer. Father, thank you for being a God of 
justice and a God who loves. Thank you for being the one that though we can't tame our tongue, you can tame our tongues. And we thank you for the way that you help us to hear your voice and a stranger's voice to run away from it. Help us to open up our mouth and you word it. Help us to apply these truths to our lives throughout this week and when you bring it to our remembrance. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I need thee, oh, I, I need thee every hour. I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come
Speak up for justice and forgiveness and use your words for love and grace. Before we depart, I just want to tell you about all the fun things we have coming up over the next few weeks. We'll be continuing our drive-in worship at the Fairfields Commons Mall for the rest of October. But guess what? We are moving inside in November. That's right. Our home, our new home, is inside the Fairfields Commons Mall in the old Elder Beerman. We'll be ready for worship on November 22nd, but before we can move in, we have a little bit of work to do, so we're asking you for your help. We just need a little bit of sweat equity on November 18th and 19th. Click the Sign Up Genius link in the description to see what needs to be done and how you can help. Our in-person Greater Things Kingdom Builders Dinner tickets have all been spoken for, but there's still an online option if you'd like to participate in that way. Just click the Eventbrite link in the description to sign up. You can also serve our littlest Kingdom Builders by becoming a soccer chaperone or driver on Saturday mornings. Just email Stephanie at wearemosaic.org for more information. Family, as you can see, there are so many crazy good things happening within the Mosaic family, and it's all because of you. With unity, we can continue to grow God's kingdom. And I know it seems like a daunting task to do alone, but here's something we can all do collectively. We can give. You can give online at www.wearemosaic.org. You can click the link in the description box, or you can give on our app or mail a check to 70 Birch Alley, Suite 240, Beaver Creek, Ohio. I want to encourage you to download our app because it's really cool. There's a lot of resources for you and your family on it. Like you can drop a prayer or care request, or you can sign up for our women's group fall session and so much more. Join us back here next week for more on our Undivided series. And remember that you are loved. Grant, O oh Lord, that what has been said with our lips, we may believe in our hearts. And that what we believe in our hearts, we may practice in our lives. Amen. And I'll see you next week.